Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed the previous lecture and quantitative finance lecture series. Um, I had discussed value at risk in previous lecture. Um, this is going to be more uh, discussion about uh, value at risk and uh, in a simple way how we can estimate it with certain assumptions. Um, this topic is a vast topic. Uh, but here the idea is to introduce uh, this topic in an easy to understand manner. Uh, later on, if you want to do research in this particular area, you can go ahead and uh, you know, feel free to do PhD in this area. But nevertheless, let's start. So in the previous lecture, we discussed about uh, value at risk, formal definition and what, what not. Um, so what it is actually, in simple words, uh, this is a measure of uh, risk, right? So let's say you are, you are a fund manager and uh, you are managing, uh, say, $1 billion, right? So you, you would like to know that uh, how much is the value at risk at a given day or given hour or whatever is your daily time frame, a week, uh, for you have that much amount on risk. Because if you don't know how much uh, money you have on risk, um, you might end up losing your whole portfolio. Uh, if you are trading in advanced, uh, say derivatives or say day trading or whatnot, advanced you know, financial instruments trading if you are doing. Uh, there are examples, uh, for example, a few years ago, I think, uh, I don't remember the exact date, uh, uh, this big bank, giant bank in Hong Kong got bankrupt. They did bad bet on options trading. And, uh, you know, so after that time, people uh, started looking into some other ways of measuring the risk. And the value at risk becomes uh, quite important. Uh, okay, so let's try to understand what it is. So, for example, as a portfolio manager or a fund manager, you want to know that um, that with a certain level of confidence, um, how much you can lose. Okay, so let's say uh, if I say okay with ninety nine percent confidence level, I will not lose more than a million dollar. On, on my portfolio. So what it means that out of 100, only one chance is there that you can lose $1 million, okay? Or uh, let's say, you know, I have put it in words here. Uh, for the, over the next week, uh, we have 97% confidence that we will lose no more than $1 million. How we can write it in an equation form? We can write it in an equation form like this. Here, PT is the probability, okay? And wealth after your, you know, one week, WT plus H would be the wealth, and your initial wealth is current time frame. WA is how many shares, for example, you have bought. Uh, and this is less than or equal to $1 million. We have put minus sign because it's a loss, right? And uh, 0.03 is, is just 1 minus 0.97, okay? So 97%, like, this is the probability uh, that we will lose no more than $1 million. So 1 minus will, will give 0 0.03 here. Now, you can also write it in, in other way, you know. So this 1 million is your value at risk, okay? for A shares or how much is the quantity of your investment. And alpha is the quantile, okay, which quantile it is. And one minus C, C is the confidence level. So C becomes 97%, okay. We can also see, represent it on a graph. We can see here, uh, it's a probability uh, density function. So those who are not familiar with the PDFs, probability density functions, or basic probability, um, I would recommend you to just check out uh, some textbook or wait for, for my lectures, uh, which I'm going to be 
putting some some intro, introductory lectures on probability and density functions and all. So alpha is basically whatever is the far, farthest quantile here. So that, that becomes alpha. Now, so rest, it will go here, your one minus C confidence level. And you can say here is your VAR, well, you're at risk okay, for your end of NW, all right? Now let's, let's uh, go a step further and uh, see how we can calculate. And that becomes important because uh, if we don't know how to calculate, um, we don't know, right? Now, always remember that uh, we are talking here when the uh, market is behaving as normal, okay? So, in other words, we are talking about a standard normal probability distribution. We are not talking about any shocks in the market or, you know, economic shocks or, you know, say 2008 market crash and all. We are not talking about, we are just talking about as if it's a normal situation. So for that, we have uh, a standard normal distribution function or probability distribution, standard normal, which works very well, okay? So let's talk about the single stock. Let's say you, you just buy a stock of one company, say Liquider, okay? So that's one company stock. And uh, you have quantity A, means A shares, you have bought at a price P, okay, small p, uh, with the volatility nu, okay, it's a Greek letter nu. Now, we like to know that with 99% certainty or confidence level that how much we can lose over next week, all, all right? So that is basically, we are trying to calculate how much is the value at risk over the next week. Got it? Okay. So let's calculate the standard deviation first. So standard deviation, we can write it new multiplied by the price and one over 52 is just simply because uh, it is time is step is one week here we are talking about and it is, you know, in a year 52 weeks. So one over 50, 52 and to the power one by two, all right? Now, we, we, we got it. Now, we, we must have to calculate uh, how far, how far is the, uh, remember, don't forget this bell-shaped, very popular curve. How far is this, this quantile level? Okay, so that is 1% level. So how many standard deviations apart from the mean? Okay. So you can get it from the standard uh, statistic uh, table or you know Excel or either way. So that turns out to be 2.33, 99% confidence level or here is the lowest farthest um, 1%, okay? So what's our VAR would be simply just 2.33 multiplied by standard deviation and whatever the wealth you have here, okay? Or we can expand it, put, put the value of the sigma in this equation and we get this equation, right? Now, we can formalize it. Let's say um, negative number is just because it's, it's the way of representation that this is the value at risk. I mean, we, we, we may lose that much value and uh, here, see, rest of the terms are same in this equation except the delta t. Delta t is nothing but the time horizon, okay? So delta time horizon here is one week, okay? And then alpha is the quantile, this quantile alpha. And one minus c is the confidence level, clear? Now, in this equation, remember, we are assuming that the mean is at the zero level, okay? But in, in real, real scenarios, we do not have mean at zero level if we are, you know, delta t or, you know, time, delta time, 
is bigger okay then we, we have to uh, modify this equation we have to take into account the drift in the asset values okay so what it is basically the, the drift will move towards the right side so we have to uh, accommodate that factor the drift factor so what what we can do we can rewrite this equation like the equation um, when, like this equation here so let me let me uh, put number on the equation so this is first equation when we have assumed zero mean this is second equation okay when we have the longer time horizon delta t is longer here so mu is the drift of the asset value so the whole value at risk will shift towards the right side a simply number of shares or you know quantity at which price p you have bought it uh, mu is the drift and delta t minus new uh, volatility and then delta t to the power 1 by 2 alpha is quantile level and 1 minus c c is the confidence level clear very simple equation okay Remember, this discussion is at the simplicity in a, in a uh, most simple way how you can get assess the value at risk. Otherwise, if we're going to get into the mathematical details for every fine, fine things, it becomes very difficult to calculate value at risk. I mean, there are methods, um, you know, if, if you are really, you know, managing $1 million, you would be putting effort into those uh, computational tools. Um, say for example Monte Carlo simulation is very popular it is slow but it gives you good results the, you know good confidence that okay we are, we are at right but nevertheless the idea is very simple that we want to know the how much money or how much about is at risk for any given time interval okay so now uh, we have the equation one and two for single stock it just you bought for one company but that's not a good practice ideally you should diversify your uh, investment you should buy into multiple companies um, your chosen companies um, to reduce the risk so let's say we have <clears throat> portfolio of multiple stocks what we can do how we can estimate so it's very simple that uh, the volatility will change okay so the volatility for multiple stock portfolio it will change now here for simplicity we are using this formula for the volatility of this uh, multiple stock portfolio but there are methods to get the volatility of your whole portfolio now here ai is a are simply the number of shares or stocks for ith uh, asset or jth asset correspondingly and uh, new is the vo volatility of that particular stock and rho is the correlation between uh, ith and jth uh, stock and p i and p j is the price clear rest of the formula is, is simple as before so that becomes equation number three okay for a multiple stock portfolio cool good now let's talk about if we have derivatives cool and instead of uh, stock options or instead of stocks we are talking here options okay our portfolio has options only um, I did a uh, recently I did a very good video on options um, that is under corporate finance lecture series I would recommend you to watch that video on options uh, it's a fascinating uh, financial instrument uh, goes more into gambling side but nevertheless uh, banks uh, hedge funds mutual funds they are using options um, to trade to manage their risk to make money so let's discuss about uh, for derivatives such as options 
uh, how we can calculate the value at rest. Notice that the, the equation for, for derivatives is almost same as if uh, the equation for stocks that that means the equation 4 and 3 are similar except we have here deltas okay instead of quantity or number of shares now we have delta what is the delta delta is nothing but the rate of change of uh, portfolio with respect to the ith asset means the sensitivity how much sensitive I, um, how much sensitive portfolio is towards the changes in ith asset okay and that is for derivatives all right isn't it simple okay so we discussed in a very simpler form what is var value at risk for single stock for multiple stock and for derivatives for portfolio of of derivatives okay now Let's extend our discussion a bit further. Um, so we calculated it, but uh, why? Why do we really need it? We understand that, okay, um, this much money is at risk or this much wealth is at risk. But in terms of uh, performance measurement, can we use value at risk? Okay, so let's see how we can do conventionally. Uh, people they use the good return to risk ratio okay for their portfolio performance what it means that uh, return uh, in excess of risk free divided by volatility okay so instead of using uh, uh, this ratio we can use the value at risk okay how we can use that so whatever is is the daily profit and loss we can divide that daily profit and loss by the daily value at risk okay that will give us a performance measure think about it so guys uh, thank you for for listening me and uh, watching this video lecture uh, on value at risk um, and thank you for subscribing uh, do not uh, forget to subscribe Lee professor channel uh, those who haven't subscribed uh, this will help you to get notified latest videos as soon as those are available and also encourages us to create more interesting lectures for your learning thank you once again and have a wonderful day